December 2009, I was invited to come at the Congress of the Nyasa Reserve in Pemba. And uh, there I gave a talk about uh, rubies and the ruby trade. And uh, I met for the first time uh, Dr. Colin Begg, who was giving a talk about her annual uh, study about a lion on predator population in Nyasa. She put uh, gemstone mining and mining as a higher threat compared to trophy hunting. Conservation is a difficult word. I think that conservation is the protection of animal populations for future generations. But I don't think that that excludes people and we have to be able to integrate it with livelihoods and with poverty reduction. So we have 12 different programs. Um, the project's grown quite big now. Um, some of them are to do with education. So we have a scholarship program to get children into secondary school because we believe very firmly that with an education people can move out of the reserve and get an alternative livelihood. At the moment the only skills people have are bush skills, so it's steering and hunting and mining. The second is we have an environmental education program to teach people about conservation. So from these cows, children will learn that it's not good to kill elephants. It's it's not good to kill what nature provides us. As uh, Colin say very often, you know, conservation is mainly to make sure to uh, lower the conflict between uh, human and wildlife. And then we have a number of programs that look at food security. So the aim is to reduce bushmeat snaring and increase livelihoods. And we needed to provide an alternative protein source. And so we have a small livestock breeding program for rabbits, ducks, domesticated guinea fowl, which works as a microcredit scheme. Yeah. Fish are the most important protein source for people here and they're eating it four or five times a week. If they didn't have fish stocks, then they would switch to bushmeat. So if you have a healthy fisherman and a healthy fish industry, people will not go for snaring and then you will have a healthy lion population. People. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. that's so 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 it's a grand problem. We have 25 wildlife guardians spread across 25 villages across the reserve that collect information on human wildlife conflict and also help people build corrals for their goats, help them when they have issues with elephants and try and assist them in reducing the conflict. No, no, no. He says that when we were at the gate control, the elephants were screaming. So when we stop, by the time we stopped there, they were running. How many elephants? Quantity elephants, imagine. They have babies. I think we should move quickly from this area.
solar jar. We run everything off solar here. So the entire center, the offices, everything's run off solar. The only time we don't use solar is if we need a welding machine or something in the workshop. Really what we're trying to do is trying to help help the environment and um, in order to do so we need to keep vehicles running um, in a good way. It's the wilderness that counts here and lions are an indicator of this wilderness. If the lion population is doing well then you know that everything else is doing well. So as they say you know sometimes the lions they will take care of themselves but we have to take care of the people in order for the people not to destroy the forest, not to poach the animals so the lions they will have some food and they will be able to continue to survive. So that's a satellite collar, uh -huh. that's, and then these are just VHF collars, and then that's a GPS collar. And we've collared 57 lions. It's almost seven. Are they far from here? Yeah, not very far as such. It's almost a three to four kilometers of drive. We are getting closer to the getting closer to the lion. We are just very close to the lions. So, the, the, the lions are this side here. The one that's Fatima, but others are this side here. So we are surrounded by lions here, and I think you will see them all. If the lions disappear from this area, then you know that there's basically sickness. They're basically a thermometer of this area and an indication that something's not right. Well, one of the very exciting things that's happened this year is that we have been don't, um, sponsored by Gemfields. Now, Gemfields is a company that's just outside the reserve in Montepoish, which runs a ruby mine. It's outside the protected area, but Nyasa Reserve is the largest wilderness area in, in the province. And so this is very important for us for a number of reasons. The one is that it's been almost impossible for us to get support from people surrounding Nyasa Reserve. All the support for Nyasa Reserve is coming from overseas. And I think this commitment from a business that is here in Mozambique um, sets a benchmark for the future. And I think also that it is an indication that um, gem fields and the ruby mining are concerned about this spectacular wilderness area that's, that's in, that's neighboring them. And I think these are all very positive partnerships and I really hope to see more of that. Using a, a nice gemstone to support a nice idea, this is something that has to be great. It makes sense that the rubies are part of this wilderness. They're part of this and should all be connected. I think there's wonderful ways that you could connect the two. And it gives the rubies or whatever gemstone it is, a very much an extra value that it comes from a very special place. Gemfields is not doing any damage to Nias Reserve. It's our neighbor, but it's actually supporting the conservation. And so I think it can only be a win-win. It's possible, I think, to create uh, an origin to make people dream about African ruby if you can associate, you know, this African ruby with something positive. Obviously, you know, one of the best ways to promote rubies from Mozambique would be to associate them, you know, with the gem of the living world that are national park. We are starting our trust with the North Mozambique. The Niasa project, we have already started contributing 0.25% of our earnings from these to the Lion Reserve projects. 
earlier we have contributed to the rhino projects in south africa so like that we have pledged to develop our um, this conservation which is very much closely linked with our mining activity we have um, started from zero almost here now we know what we are doing now we know where is the resources they are calling as mashamba and uh, this is pick three most of the premium rubies the rhino rubies as well as the dragon eye rubies has been excavated and mined from this pit with the revenue coming from this dragon eye ruby, Jamfield decided to donate some money in order to, to help you know, anti-poaching and to help to preserve the lion and to minimize the conflict between wildlife and, uh, and people in, the, in North and Mozambique. So with this uh, rhino ruby and this uh, dragon eye ruby, Jamfield is positioning themselves into uh, leaders in terms of conservation gemstones, which is a very new approach and this is something very fascinating. We will augment our uh, mining capacity itself. Every year we are increasing it. We are investing on the new machines, uh, new dump trucks and new LEDs are coming up, excavators are there. Stones that survive all the weathering are usually, you know, the bulky stone with no fracture and no inclusion. So you have, in fact, a higher concentration of high-quality stone. Even if you find less stone per cubic meter, you know, the economic value of this stone is higher. So here are two B-type samples that would be good for the GA reference collection. We have uh, done a lot of investment in our security also. New CCTV cameras have come, wireless systems have uh, developed. We have about eight operators and they're continuously monitoring the uh, cameras on a 24 by 7 basis. So Adrian, this is Jim Master So at MRM we've developed two types of grading system. The first one for the primary type rubies and as you can see here the primary type are generally flattish in nature, very good crystal, shiny crystal surfaces and sharp edges. So they haven't been transported at all. When we receive primary type material in our sort house we first categorize it. We categorize it into premium ruby, ruby, low ruby, corundum, and sapphire. I'm playing with ruby every day. Yeah. It's much better to go to collect the sample yourself. You get much more information and this is much more traceable. Coming back regularly, we can follow up the production of the mine and uh, we'll be able to have data over five or ten years that will be not only representative of you know the mine at one point but representative of the production over five or ten years it's easy to see the decoys of it yeah some stone are mighty because of the shape yeah most of the stones are weakly or no fluorescent, but you have still a significant number of stones that have a strong medium fluorescent, like here, about 30%, and you have a small percentage, about 10%, that have a strong fluorescence. But 
this stone would be very useful for some inclusion study we want to do. We are the only lab doing that currently. It seems that there is nearly no Garimperos in the area. You, you were in for the security or the Garimperos just moved to another area because there was a new discovery somewhere? Security has done a great job that they have chased them to some different area. Security forces, uh, you know, removed the Garim bureau from Toro area. So you had a lot of people moving to uh, to Nakaka. What is interesting in this area is that uh, uh, the government allow uh, small-scale miners Garim bureaus to work there. So they are not uh, really. Um, afraid of uh, people coming because they know that they are safe and they will, uh, they will not be chased by the police and things like that. So this is a very good place to try to see a bit how the Gary Imperos, these uh, small-scale uh, uh, unlicensed miners are, are working. We are trying to get uh, some local guy in order to take us to uh, the place where there is a mine. This is the name of my company. G. It's a laboratory. G. A laboratory. Uh, a laboratory and a school. And we are teaching about the gemstone, how to identify. And É para eles poderem ver como é que eles trabalham, esse povo nós, como é que estamos a trabalhar, como estamos a tirar ali aquela pedra. Para eles poderem ver, tirar e fazer um livro de que então os africanos, a forma que tiram o coisa. Ok. Ah, então, yes. Obrigado. <laughs> so finally we got the authorization from the village chief, so now we are going to a mining zone. Qual forma que estão a fazer? Como é que estão a tigrir? Se realmente esse lugar que vocês estão a cair são lugares certos ou não? E verem como é que as vossas condições quando estão a acabar. Trabalhar, qualquer o seu estilo, ser retirado e ir ser visto aonde? No televisor, não sei aonde, no livro. É? <laughs> But I want to see also how the Gary Peros are working. Yeah and in order to be able to explain to people where the rubies are coming from and to show them that it's not just a big company working but you have also, you know, small people. Okay, so don't worry. Do. Thanks very much. Uh, you understand. Yeah. You have about five to six hundred people working in that area, so if it was bad, there would be less people. Uh, from here, with this color, it would be a very nice stone. So the stones are a little bit light when they are small, but when you, if you have a big stone here, it would be really nice. This would make very good uh, stone. Very high quality stone if the stone are clean and uh, larger. But uh, they are small and uh, a little bit included. You like my job? Yeah, I like your job. Okay. So this is one of Garimperia and he wants to talk to you. He's food is good. He was a manager. So he quit the job, the company manager, to become a miner here? Yeah. Não, não desisti. Ficaram de ver seis meses de salário. Não recebi até hoje. Então achei melhor desarriscar. A família acontece, você chega em casa. A, a mulher e os filhos querem alguma coisa para comer. Você não tem nada. O que é que vai? Ele não pagou o salário. Olha, eu já ouvi que saía um pouco de pedra. Com pedra já consegue algum dinheiro. De facto, aquela pedrinha que eu apanhei é dinheiro, sim, de facto. He heard that in Monte Pois there is a ruby. And ruby is worth. So that's why he has come here to get something at least. 
he left his family, everything to come here just to look for rubies. Procurar, procurar alguma coisa para dar à minha família. See, 2009, he came here. He hasn't gone back to home. Para ajudar, nada, não, não consigo. He hasn't got yet, and he he's struggling. His family is not got enough yet. Essa é a questão de fundo. Vai se eu conseguir um pouco, I will go back. He's saying that once he gets the big piece, it's the day that he's going back to his home. He will never stop until he finds it. Is that what he's saying? Hey, uh, uh, our Victoria Mort. Mining is an issue because uh, people have a dream about mining. It often encourages people to come in here that come from a long distance away. The Garampere is something that's just arrived here. But I think that the ruby mining is not poisoning a whole ecosystem. Hundreds of people are pouring into the reserve for artisanal mining, which is actually illegal but very difficult to control. And they're digging up the rivers for gold and they're using mercury. And the mercury, once it gets into the river systems, has the potential to completely disrupt the ecology of the area and will also destroy the livelihoods of people people here. The Slugenda River is a wonderful wild river that floods and, and to have a disturbance like the mercury going into this river would be disastrous because this river is the lifeblood of the reserve. The gold mining is something that definitely is a new threat and to be honest it is the single threat that could destroy everything that, we, that we're doing. Estamos pronto para a patrulhar e pegar um desses garimpeiros junto com a colégio esportivo de arma. The rangers are going on an anti-poaching and an anti-mining patrol. These scouts were initially hired to 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 deal with poaching, so we find our scouts now dealing with miners, which they were never expecting to deal with. Years ago. If you were to fly towards Makula Mountain now, you should fly over here. Okay, and they can circle and tell us where various positions are, where the miners are. So we're getting very close now to the mining. Area. Yeah, the reality is that these guys make money, but a lot of that money goes to Tanzania, and the real money is being made across the border. This is a process of building trust, getting a very clear understanding of what the dynamics are here. And we're in, in competition with, with ivory traders. We are going to go, but we have to be disdobbed. This is because other people are on top. OK, you're flying towards the west. You need to come east, um, then you'll, you'll intercept us. This is the black sand that they are collecting and uh, washing this black sand with uh, mercury they will be able to extract the gold. Quantos medicas para un gramo normalmente? Mil. All of this mining equipment goes to Mbatamida and they've got mountains, literally mountains of this. The police only have a jail that can fit maybe 10 people. So, you know, they don't have food, they don't have transport, so it's a worthless exercise. So all we can do is to remove the mining materials. Our other team, 
passando por aqui mesmo. So we've got to just confirm what are we going to confiscate? Only mining materials and then they need to sign it off. This is probably ground zero for mining. We are hearing reports of more camps down that uh, the aeroplane has seen. Porque esta é a água. O próprio mercúrio misturou está por aqui, então já está a tirar a água. The big trouble with uh, gold mining in a place like that, it's uh, gold mining is poisoning all the rivers, destroying all the life. Four or five years ago, the Lugenda River was one of the finest, cleanest, most productive rivers in Africa. But this mining activity is not going to keep it that way. This job does not good for anyone here, but we are forcing to come here because through poverty. Yes. You see? Yeah, I totally understand. Huh? That's why we are here. Yeah. Just how, how I am now. So that eh? everything bad. No one is uh, clearly here or smart. Mm. But we are sleeping on the this floor like a like 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 a pig you see mm. no one no one wanted it so we are forcing nothing to do you see that's why we are here we are suffering look mm -hmm. the poverty which is on this country no employment no nothing so we are trying to uh, to survive or to support our family you see we completely respect their position and we understand and so do our scouts you know we we all we all been living here for a long time we understand the challenges and we're trying to find solutions to these and uh, while while they are suffering you know the future of this reserve is also suffering no industry no anything sure, so question. how how can, how can we survive like this when we come here to dig they come to search it away us again also only that. So what we want is employment. Every government in this world is looking to find that answer. How do you provide employment for everyone? One day mining gold, the next uh, next month they will go to mine uh, rubies and things like that. So you have traders moving, you have miners moving, you have a whole population of nomadic people doing that. And, you know, you can read about that, but there is nothing uh, better than experience on going there and work with the rangers and see what is really going on. The complexity is what do we as conservationists, trying to protect these last big wildernesses, the last big populations of lion, elephant, sable antelope, whatever it is, how do, how do you do that given this, this, this scenario? So all of those are mining materials, we, we burn those and uh, we register everything. So every bucket is counted, every spade, every pick, and that's returned to the authorities and they, they hold on to that. Another day? Yes, should be. Another day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
this Nyasa Reserve is one of the most important conservation areas left in the world today. So we realized that if we wanted to save lands, we needed to shift our focus from just focusing on the lands, and we needed to shift it to be able to concentrate on people. Because lions can look after themselves. Lions do very well in the bush without any human interference. And if we could take those threats away and sort them out with all the people here, then we would be successful with conservation.